Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I kind of thought I wanted to do a recap video of my effortless style series that I did a while back that was kind of parted into different videos that evolved around different subjects such as how to build your perfect basic wardrobe, how to accessorize your looks or how to add more colors into your wardrobe. But I never really wrapped up that whole series. Um, so this is not gonna be only a recap. I'm also gonna be giving you some more on hand styling tips on how to achieve that very effortless style that I love so much and that many of you guys love so much. So there are small things that I like to do every single day when I get dressed without even thinking about it anymore. But what might seem to be obvious to me might not be that obvious to you. So I really hope this video will be helpful to you guys. So before moving to the actual styling tips, I thought I wanted to just emphasize how important it is that you start with the basics. Because having your basic wardrobe sorted out just makes everything so much easier. It gets easier to get dressed in the morning and you just know you have a wardrobe filled with items that never let you down, that you feel comfortable in and that you can mix and match all together without having to overthink things. So having the basics sorted is definitely the first step of all things. If you want my complete basic wardrobe guide, I'm gonna link the video down below from my Effortless Style series. Um, but please bear in mind that it is my style, so you can definitely adjust it so that it fits your life, your preferences, your taste in colors and fits, stuff like that. So let's have a look at a couple do's and a couple don'ts in the area of the basic wardrobe. So the first step is definitely to think quality above quantity. And I'm not saying that you should start all over, throw everything you have already out, um, because that's not very sustainable. So enjoy the journey that it's going to be, take it step by step, and um, it's definitely gonna take some time, especially if you feel like you're starting from scratch. I do also have a very interesting article about how you can spot when something is good quality because these days it seems to be something that we're thrown around but no one really knows what good quality actually means. Um, I have trouble defining that myself sometimes and I've linked this article several times before but I'm gonna link it down below as well if you want to have a look at that. And I'm also gonna link my 10 steps to care for your wardrobe guide because that is very important if you want to have a long-lasting, good quality, basic wardrobe. So next, comfort above almost anything else is really key. It is so important that you feel comfortable in what you wear, not only the fits, but that you also stay true to your own style. When we feel good, we also look good, so comfort is definitely key. There are different loopholes that you can look for, so instead of going for that 12 centimeter high heel, try going for one that is maybe six centimeters because then you still get that lift and you still look really elegant. So constantly look out for these small loopholes so that you make sure you stay comfortable at all times. The final rather important do, and something that should actually be the first step in any case, is to be real. There's a huge difference between runway slash Instagram fashion and real life fashion. So be true to yourself, be true to the lifestyle you have, the hobbies you have. Um, have a look at all, all of these things even before you begin to weed out your closet and before you start building your basic wardrobe or a capsule wardrobe um, because it is so important that you think about how your life really looks before you even start. I do have a guide on how to find your own true style as well, so I'm also going to link that video down below for you in case you want to watch that. So let's have a look at the don't that I've written down, and that is to not overthink things. So again, don't be too drawn to runway fashion or Instagram fashion if you feel like it's something that only looks great in pictures, but it doesn't really suit your lifestyle or it just doesn't work in real life. Of course, you can take some of the elements from images like this and use that for inspiration and styling. But it's definitely more important that it looks cute in real life than just in a picture. All right, now we have the basics all clear. Let's move on to the actual styling tips that I have for you guys. First up, we have the half tuck. 
I do this with basically all of my tops, my t-shirts, uh, my shirts like I'm wearing today. I don't know if you're able to see it. It just gives a very laid back, a very relaxed twist to your outfit. So actually, whenever I add new tops to my wardrobe, I always try to do this half tuck because it's rather important to me that they have that perfect length. So I definitely find it easier to do the half tuck properly and without it looking really bulky and weird if I'm wearing boyfriend jeans like today that sit kind of low on the waist or if I'm wearing a mid-rise kind of jean instead of a very high waist one. Next up, I like to give basically all my tops again, my jumpers, my long sleeve t-shirts, my shirts, a roll up at the sleeves, which is again the case right here. So it's not only my long sleeve blouses and tops I like to do this with, it's actually also my trousers and jeans. So a little roll up is a great way of again getting that very laid back and relaxed vibe into your outfit. I actually also like to give my blazers a ruche up at the sleeves and I learned this on Emma Hill's YouTube channel so all credits to her for that idea. So what I do is actually just take two rubber bands, just regular kitchen rubber bands and I place them here on the sleeve of my blazer and then I just kind of ruche it up. So it's a great way of making a more polished item a bit more relaxed. Obviously you could do the ruching without the elastic bands but the thing with the elastic bands is that they make sure the sleeves stay put all the time. And I really like that because then I don't have to think about maintaining them all the time. Moving on to the third tip, it's all about contrasts. Now, like I just mentioned, ruching out the sleeves on a well-cut blazer is a great way of adding some contrast to a rather well-dressed item. So I like to do this to kind of keep a balance between these more well-dressed items and then something a bit more relaxed. So it could be, for example, ruching out the sleeves on that well-dressed item or putting more dressier items together with more laid-back basics like a pair of rugged jeans or a basic white t-shirt. Other contrasts that I can mention is, for example, taking your favorite classic black suit and then pair that together with a plain white t-shirt and a pair of Converse sneakers. Another contrast that I can mention I really like is putting a rather feminine blouse together with a pair of great jeans, either with a busted knee or maybe a raw hem. I really, really like those contrasts. So make sure to constantly have a good balance between something a bit more well-dressed and then something a bit more effortless and relaxed so that you won't end up feeling like a homeless person or on the contrary, that you'll end up feeling a little bit too overdressed. The fourth tip is it is all about those details, which is so cliche, but nonetheless true. If I have an off day where I don't feel like doing much out of my hair or putting on a lot of makeup, Putting on all of my favorite golden jewelry with an effortless outfit is a great and easy way to look put together. I also feel like a well-crafted pair of leather boots or a great handbag is really something that can elevate your look and make it look more exclusive. And yeah, again, it's all about those small details. So last but not least, I have developed some more relaxed beauty routines over the past couple of years, not only to make more sustainable choices with less waste, but also to lay off that feeling of having to look perfect all the time. I'm just so over that. So I have definitely incorporated much more effortless and simple beauty routines. So it's really important to me to check up on my makeup in daylight to see that it looks as natural as possible. I'm not really a huge fan of that very full face kind of makeup, but everyone to their own taste. Personally, I just don't like when it looks like I've spent too many hours in the bathroom. And I also feel like it's high maintenance throughout the day because then I'll worry about if something gets smudged and things like that. And I'm just not about that. I used to be once, but I'm not anymore. I don't know if it's because I'm getting closer to 30. Anyway, but of course it's about keeping a great balance because I'd be lying if I said I didn't like beauty routines. It's like therapy. I love watching beauty videos and makeup videos as well. So 
I'm definitely a beauty kind of girl, but I've just developed more effortless and simple routines over the years. So let's say I'm in the mood for curling my hair really nice one morning, then I'd probably not spend too much time on my makeup, just do something really simple and easy sort of to balance things out a bit. In general, the way I like to do my hair is actually to sleep with two braids. And then in the morning, I just spray some beach spray into my hair. And then I curl a few random sections along my face, like I've done today, actually. Um, it's a great way of getting some movement into your hair and making it look more put together, but without you having to spend an hour doing it. So for me, this hairstyle is really a great compromise and a great way of looking put together, but still in an effortless way. So effortless style is not only about looking effortless, it's also about actually doing things with as little effort as possible. Then of course I also have other beauty routines like applying a great body oil to, give a, to get a very glowy skin and also to give some love to my hands and my feet. And then of course, removing my makeup every single night, applying a great moisturizer so that my skin in my face looks as healthy as possible. I'm not really a fan of those five step beauty routines, especially when it comes to face care. For me, there's so much waste going on in the beauty department in general, and I feel like we get tempted all the time to buy all sorts of products that don't even make that big of a difference. So I'd rather keep things simple, and um, I'm not saying this because I'm born with perfect skin or anything. Um, I've been suffering with cystic acne for years, and I still have breakouts from time to time, so my skin is far from perfect. But um, like I said in the beginning, I'm just kind of over this having to look perfect all the time and switched up my beauty routines so that I have simple routines, but at the same time, I'm focusing on the things that I know work for me. So to wrap up the beauty thing, again, keep a great balance and keep things simple, but stay true to who you are, stay true to the, whatever routines you like. So that's it for this video guys, that's how I like to evolve around the subject of effortless style. I do also have some style icons I turn to from time to time and one of my favorites are of course Anina Bing or Emmanuel Elt. I do have a lot of inspiration over on my Pinterest for effortless styling so I'm gonna make sure to leave my Pinterest profile link down below so you can go follow me over there. Other than that, make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily outfit updates and also daily snippets from my everyday life. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye guys.